We've got two more examples I want to look at here. Both of these are easy versions of the game Monopoly. Um, you know, normally in Monopoly, you roll dice and you move your uh, uh, marker around the board and stuff. Well, here, uh, this is a simple, uh, not not very interesting version of the game. But in this one, we flip a coin and we move around the board uh, clockwise. And if we if we get heads, we move two, and if we get tails, we move uh, one. So we want to find the steady state vector of the game. So uh, let's look at our um, how many spaces do we have on the board here? We've got three spaces, but one of them is the policeman that says go to jail. So if you land, you, you never wind up staying here. If you if you get to this point, it sends you to state one. And if you just land on state two or land on state one, you'll be in those states. So let's draw the matrix for this. From and to. And so we've got, uh, I'm going to put go and jail. Go and jail. So um, if you're on go but what happens next you flip the coin 50 percent chance you go to jail 50 percent chance you go to the policeman which sends you right back to jail so if you're on go you're 100 percent going to jail and zero uh, percent staying on go if you start in jail when you when you roll, there's a 50% chance that you hit the policeman and go back to jail, but there's also 50% chance that you uh, get heads and you move to go. So this is going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So that's our transition matrix for this guy. And what's the um, what's the steady state going to be? Well, let's just use octave to get that. See zero point five, one point five. We take this and raise it to a big power. Uh, notice what we're getting there. Uh, steady state vector. Let's see. Go is on top, so that's uh, one third of the time you'll be on go. Two thirds of the time you'll be in jail. This would not be a fun game. In my opinion, regular Monopoly is not a fun game either. But anyway, let's uh, let's look at this next one. This one's slightly harder Monopoly. On this one, you've got uh, three states plus uh, the policeman. So let's let's label these. Actually, those don't label them. We'll just use their letters. We've got go, jail, and boardwalk. Let's see, this is from. This is two. So if you flip a coin, let's look at this. Say you start and go. Uh, there's a 50% chance you go to jail, and a 50% chance you go to the policeman who sends you back to jail. So if you're on go, you're going to jail. If you are on jail, then there's a 50% chance you go to the policeman, which sends you back to jail. So jail to jail is 0.5. And jail to boardwalk is 0.5. And then if you're on boardwalk, 50% chance you go to you go. 50% chance you wind up in jail. So we can take that and um, let's find the steady state vector. Let's see, 0, 0, 0.5, 1, 0.5, 0.5, 
0 0.5, 0. So just for fun, let's take those column sums. If you raise this to a large power, you get this. Those look like sevenths to me, the 28571. Let's. Yeah. So the steady state vector here is going to be. 1 7th, 4 7th, 2 7th. So that means if you played this game for a long time, uh, 1 7th of the time you'd be on go, 4 7th of the time you'd be in jail, and 2 7th of the time you'd be on boardwalk. Now, here's an interesting thing. Uh, you know, so far we've been ignoring the other parts of the game. We've just been looking at uh, probabilities. But suppose that every time somebody landed on Boardwalk, they had to, suppose you owned Boardwalk, and every time somebody landed there, they had to pay you 100 bucks. Well, if you think about what this means, two-sevenths of the time people are going to be on Boardwalk. So that means... Uh, 2 sevenths times 100, uh, what is that, uh, 28, 75, one, 200 over 7, yeah, 28.57. That would be the average amount of money you make per other player's role if you own Boardwalk in this silly game. Now, you can analyze the actual game of Monopoly, but it has a lot more states, and instead of having a 50% you know, chance of moving ahead one or two, there are um, a lot of other things that you could do. Or there are, um, you know, you'd roll dice, and you might go ahead two spaces or three or whatever. And there's a paper where somebody worked all that out for the actual game of Monopoly, and they came up with the frequencies at which people would be on the different um, the different uh, spaces on the game. And notice, uh, well, this this is what they came up with. If you add up all these frequencies, you get uh, one hundred, or you get one, hundred percent. Notice the policeman; they they included that here as a, a, sp a space on the board, but the, it's got zero because you never stay there. If you land on the policeman, you you go to jail. So, um, anyway, this is the, uh, yeah, the, the full frequency chart for the game. And if you're interested in this, I put the article I got this out of on the, um, I put it on uh, Course Den. So, if you want to read it, take a look at it. It's a little more involved than, uh, than these Markov chains. These are sort of toy models we're playing with. And I just call it a Markov chain. That's the name for, uh, it's another name for these systems you get with stochastic matrices. So anyway, uh, you can analyze other games too. The game of shoots and ladders. Uh, you can analyze that with uh, stochastic matrices. And interesting thing that happens with that is, um, you know, there's no strategy to the game. You just go through it and... If you look at the long term, uh, if you were to model uh, shoots and ladders, the um, the steady state vector would be this. Would be a bunch of zeros because eventually you're going to get to the last, and um, you'd you'd eventually get to the last um, space on the board and you'd be done. So anyway, that's that's kind of a neat application there. Um, That'll do it for this video.